Hi, this is Manos Burlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 98 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of an unusual bypass graft, an old case actually, but with important clinical lessons. The patient had previous bypass and presented with an inferior ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. He did have a CTO on the right coronary artery, CTO on the circumflex, as well as a high-grade lesion with competitive flow into the LAD, as we can see here. His lima was patent, although he did have a large side branch and was supplying the LAD, which was also giving collaterals into a large obtuse marginal branch. However, we could not find a graft to the right coronary artery. There was an occluded SVG to the left, but then RIMA injections did not show any RIMA graft and uh, no other graft could be found. So the question is what is actually supplying the inferior wall? And in cases like this, uh, when we cannot uh, find a graft, one way to go is to perform a, a orthogram. Another way would be to stop, send the patient for um, an emergency CTA, but the problem is here it's an ST elevation myocardial infarction and time is muscle. So here is the angiogram, 20 cc's for 3 seconds for a total of 60 cc's in the ascending aorta. And what we're seeing here is that there is some feeling of the right coronary artery, however the feeling is not coming early, but it's happening quite late into the process. And you can see that actually maybe tracking from below instead of coming from above. So after looking at this for several minutes, we ended up going back down and we engaged the celiac trunk with an IM catheter. And sure enough, after injecting the celiac trunk, we have flow going all the way to the right coronary artery. So this is an example of a gastroepiploic graft. And here's a brief overview of the anatomy. This is the celiac trunk. It has three main branches. The splenning artery is one, the left gastric artery is the other one, and the third one is the common hepatic. And the common hepatic gives the gastroduodenal artery that then gives rise to the gastroepiploic artery. And this is on a different illustration. Here is the celiac trunk again, the gastroduodenal artery, common hepatic, gastroduodenal, and then the right gastroepiploic artery. The way this is used for coronary bypass is um, by essentially getting that artery, ligating it, and then making a hole in the diaphragm and connecting it into the coronary artery. And this is how it's done. This is the artery being harvested. Then here is a hole made in the diaphragm through which the artery is inserted. And then it is anastomosed to a target coronary artery. Now the question though is how can we get some better visualization of this? This was many years ago, we didn't have guide extensions, but we did have a catheter called Proxys, which is similar to a guide extension. So we were able to advance it into this branch and then do a selective injection that now demonstrates nicely the gastroepiploid graft going to the PDA and then uh, giving flow to the rest of the right coronary artery. And also it appears that there is a significant lesion uh, proximal to the touchdown of the gastroepiploid graft that was considered to be the culprit artery. We tried to use a stiff guide wire, this is an Ironman, to um, help with equipment delivery. However, we had acute vessel closure. We were worried about dissection, however, this seemed too abrupt and we didn't have that much difficulty wiring. So what we did is we switched it for a soft guide wire and this was all because of straightening of the bands from the stiff Ironman wire. So this was essentially a pseudo lesion forming in the gastroepiploid graft. So how to be able to wire up there? One option is to use uh, microcatheters and guide extensions. In this case, actually, we have uh, four levels of telescoping. We do have the sheath, of course, then we have the guide, level number two. We did have the proxies, which function essentially as a guide extension. And fourth, we did use a microcatheter, as well as a polymer jacket wire which sometimes are easier to deliver through areas of tortuosity. And in a case like this, we use the soft, uh, non-tapered wire, such as the Whisper, Pilot 50, Filter FC, and Sion Black. 
and then wiring through the virtuosity apart from microcatheter, apart from polymer jacket wire. Other options are forming different bands of the wire using an angulated microcatheter, using the reversed guide wire technique or a deflection balloon. In this case, we were able to use a transit microcatheter, which again we don't commonly use today, but it was quite uh, uh, commonly used those days. And through that one, uh, we were able to advance actually a soft guide wire all the way through the touchdown into the distal right coronary artery. Then it comes about uh, delivering equipment and having the deeply engaged proxies essentially function, providing us additional support. And that ended up being sufficient despite the virtuosity. So this is the balloon delivered to the target lesion. And then this is a 25 by 8 drug diluting stand. And the stand actually did make it through all those bands uh, to come to the target lesion. So the combination of strong support with the proxies and then uh, we were able to advance it through all these bands, essentially all the way to the target lesion. It was deployed and provided a nice result with resolution of that lesion. Um, the patient actually did well and did not have any recurrent chest discomfort. So in summary, there are several interesting lessons from this case. The first one is that in bypass graft patients, it is critical to have the bypass graft report or at least have some knowledge of what is the anatomy. If not, especially when emergency cases are happening like this one, then an aortogram can help find the occluded grafts. But in any case, the case should not be over until all the myocardial territories, myocardial supply, is um, identified through either bypass grafts or through collateral vessels. This is a unique case of a gastroepiploid graft, which had to be engaged through the celiac trunk, Interesting to know the anatomy. These graphs do have very good patency, but of, they're very infrequently used in clinical practice. Finally, the living equipment through this area of tortuosity was uh, facilitated by using guide extension, essentially, which was a proxys catheter, and then by using a microcatheter for wiring through all these bands. Thank you.